Hi there. Thanks for joining CBG Bytes, a series of short video segments from Treasure Data, where we chat about the latest news and industry trends and read between the lines to provide our perspectives and thoughts. So David, my friend, what do you have for us this week? Hey, Stephen, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And you? I'm doing well as well. So today I thought I'd talk about something near and dear to my heart. And I think yours as well. So I'm a dog owner, dog lover, and I think you have a cat or cats. So you're a pet owner as well. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the stuff that Nestle is doing with their Purina division in terms of using some new, gen new data sources from IoT mm -hmm. to drive what they're saying is next level personalization. So a little mm -hmm. bit of background on this. What, what Nestle's done... And they're, they're real, rolling this out in Nestle Australia, Purina Australia. So hopefully this will come to our part of the world here at some point in time. But they've created this smart bowl for pets. So there's IoT sensors in this bowl that communicate with an app on a phone. And it, it registers the weight of the food, how much food's being eaten, the time being eaten. Because it turns out that, you know, dogs are meant to chew their food and the, the, the chewing helps clean their teeth. And if they swallow the uh, the food too quickly, it's not good for them, all these kinds of things. So there's all sorts of insight into that can be learned uh, uh, from analysis of the data. But I think the key takeaway for those viewers that are you know, operating outside the, the pet food category is the innovation that we see Nestle doing here in terms of looking for these net new data sources. You know, We've talked a lot about that first party data and sometimes how that's a little bit elusive for CPG companies. But here's an example where they've kind of thought outside the box right? And, and thought about how can they capture data using new technologies, in this case, IoT or, in, or Internet of Things devices. So I think that's, that's really pretty interesting. So, you know, first takeaway here is that, that open-mindedness to new data sources. The second piece is, you know, obviously they're, they're capturing this data and they're going to use that, as it says here, um, to drive data-driven insights. But I think what's more important is the second part of this quote. It's they're, they're going to relay this information and insights back to the pet owner. So they, you know, because of this data, there's going to be insights on health concerns for the pet. Maybe it's eating too much. Maybe it's not eating enough. Um, there could be, they're even talking about being able to look at weather uh, information and, and warn people that it's going to be hot on a certain day. It can get very hot in Australia, as, as folks know. Maybe they should make sure the dog has extra water, those kinds of things. So it gets back to, you know, Stephen, you and I have talked about this idea of reciprocal value. Yes. Right. So the, the consumers giving up data about their pet. Now Nestle Prina has this opportunity to provide value back. And the value back is above and beyond just, you know, price point of, of dog food or those are, are, are a better promotion or a coupon or anything like that. It's this valuable insights that they're providing back to the uh uh, to the to the pet owner, which, you know, think about the value of that. It's just cementing that relationship. It, it's developing this loyalty between the pet owner and, and Nestle, which, you know, as we've talked about, can just be invaluable. And then the third thing that Nestle talks about is they can share this data um, across their organization. So obviously Nestle being, you know, I, I believe still the largest food company in the world, there's no brands, right? It's not just in pet food. They have confectionery and, and espresso and a bunch of you know nutritional products and baby care products, baby food. So they can share this information across the brands and um, really see how they can leverage that data. For those viewers that work for companies that maybe don't have that breadth of a product portfolio, maybe the thought here is, you might have the opportunity because of your product category to develop some kind of a device like this bowl, right? So you could have that data, but maybe you develop a collaborative partnership with brands that are affiliated with your brands, right? Non-competitive, but sharing those insights and building sort of a consortium, if you will, of consumer insights could be a really interesting way of developing better loyalty and, and sort of stickiness of your brand and these partnership brands. So again, I guess the big takeaway here in this is, is that, that thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. thinking outside the box of data source, thinking outside the box of adding value back to your consumer and thinking outside the box of how you could build cross-sell opportunities across brands within your organization or potentially outside your organization. You know, that, that's, a, that's really interesting, David, because you know, obviously we, lear we learn about um, 
the Nestle's pet uh, line of products, but also you can you can think of the same thing as with skincare, with personal hygiene products. And you talked about kind of an allergy medicine app that that obviously provides the same thing. So so there are so many ways that people can obtain, I would say, new sources of data or data that just wasn't there before. And in this instance, it's a smart ball. It's, a, it's an internet of things that's created by Nestle, but there are so much, so many more opportunities as things become smarter, things become more digital. Um, there are just so many more ways to obtain that, that, that data that you, know, you may be elusive from before. And, and one point that you mentioned about Nestle is, is obviously a big company, right? So you may or may not be in the same league as a Nestle, for example, but, but I really enjoy your point about you know, thinking about what partners you can work with. And truly it's just about how to maximize the value of that data, either with complementary products or supplemental companies, because these are all just different strategies to achieve that win-win that situation for yourself, for your other brands or for your you know, strategic partnerships that they can all win together. Exactly. Absolutely. So like I said, I can hardly wait. Uh, I'm assuming this bowl will come to the U.S. Um, something I'm definitely going to going to look into because my my dogs need help in the uh, the kibble department. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and if, you, if you're wondering what our pets look like, you know, it is in the cover image of this CPG bite. So you'll see David's dog and you see my cat. And these are just extension of our family members that we want to, we want the best for them. So thank you, David, for the insights. And thank you for joining us. Uh, same as always, we have made a valuable tool available to you, to our loyal CPG Bytes viewers. We have the customer data maturity study for free offered to you. You can learn what the customer data strategies are working, what's not working. So go to the description below, find the link for the customer data maturity study, and you can download the, the strategy guides uh, for free and make sure that you know, you'll be able to um, see what other brands are doing successfully and avoid the pitfalls. For more videos like this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the bell for all notifications. We will be back in two weeks with more topics for CPG Bytes. Take care now. Thanks, bye-bye.